I have a big problem. I have solar panels, I have battery storage, but that just isn't enough. Oh man, this is gonna get expensive, and I don't think this would be possible without the excuse of, well, this is for a YouTube video, right? For the last year or so, I've been mulling over the idea of mounting an EV battery onto the side of my house. Why? Well, because I can. No, seriously, there are some benefits. EV packs, while not quite a traditional home storage or designed to be used in houses, they're pretty impressive as home battery storage devices. For a start, they are humongous. They hold massive amounts of energy compared to a normal battery storage. They come with their own BMS, battery management system. They even come with a DC to DC converter so you can get 12 volts out of them. There is only so much solar that you can fit in a very standard three bed semi-detached house. The remaining spots that I could put solar in my garden all have some shading at different times of both the year or the day. And I might only be able to put a couple of panels in there, which just doesn't really financially make sense in the same way that a big array does. So I could either spend my money on battery storage or some panels which are not gonna do so well. Once you start adding in the cost of inverters, microinverters and optimizers, don't get me wrong, I do plan on adding a few more panels to my garden, but I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to make them blend in and not be too obtrusive. What about a solar powered canopy to bring the top and the bottom of the garden together? Hmm. Okay, okay, getting back to the point of battery packs, I'm left with another option. One that could be far more discreet to my neighbours. I mean, unless it all goes up in flames, of course. We're talking battery storage. If I get an EV pack of, say, 60 kilowatt hours and then charge this at cheap times from the grid and then give back to the grid at more expensive times, there's some money to be made of setting the cost of this gear. Then in the future, when our house usage goes up with things like a heat pump, or maybe even an EV, we know that we'll be able to get through a winter's day on cheap electric only. My aim is to be able to get completely to a zero electricity bill, and ideally to actually make a profit too. This should be possible as we're only spending about £20 a month at the minute to cover our entire year's usage at around 20 kilowatt hours a day of electricity, with the solar panels and battery storage that we've got already. So, by this point, I may have convinced you, like I've convinced myself, that an EV pack is what I need. Let's get planning this out together. My first step has been to deal with the communication between an EV battery and an inverter. A chap who goes by the name of Dala the Great has worked on communication between EV packs and inverters by intercepting the CAN bus communication and converting it to something that an inverter can understand. Pretty impressive. And the sort of stuff that's way over my head, so I've got to work with battery packs and inverters that are on the approved and tested list. My coding skills are very limited, and I'm gonna struggle if I reach problems because I've chosen a pack that nobody else has used before. I'll pop a link in the description for the GitHub where you can see Daniel's work and, of course, others involved in the projects too. Without getting too nerdy, I need something called a Lilligo development board, which basically is an ESP32 board with some bits added onto it, which you then add your code on and that does the job of communicating. There's quite a range of EV batteries available to be used, ranging from a Nissan Leaf, a bit boring, to Polestar batteries. Ooh, they're 78 kilowatt hours. But I do have some stipulations. I want to go for an LFP battery for a few reasons. One, they last a long time. I plan on cycling this battery at least once a day, if not twice a day, if I can get away with it. So I want a battery that can handle many cycles. I think it'll be interesting over time to log how the battery performs. Say to look back in five years time and see how much that battery has degraded. LFP batteries are also inherently more safe. 
Because this is a domestic environment where I and my family live and sleep, I want this to be as safe as possible. I was tempted by the Kona EV batteries. There seems to be quite a few floating around on the internet for cheap prices, but when you consider that they're lightly available because there was a recall fire issue with Kona packs, it doesn't take too long to persuade myself that this is just not a good idea. What if I ended up with one of those dodgy recalled ones that's just made it into circulation? Okay, so this limits me down quite a lot more. So it looks like I'll be going with a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y LFP battery. Unfortunately, these are not the cheapest. Great, let the hunt begin. Moving on then to inverters. I want to get as much energy back and forth between the grid and myself as possible. On single phase, which I have now, my limit is six kilowatts, roughly based on an inverter that I might be able to get. And this kind of has me questioning whether it's really worth it. At six hours of cheap electricity and six kilowatts, that would only give me 36 kilowatt hours of battery, which I could then discharge through the day or at peak time. So it would mean that I'd never be able to fully charge a battery pack, meaning I'd effectively have paid for some battery pack that I wouldn't be using. One way of looking at this is that I could keep my battery between 20% and 80% to increase its longevity. But I think that's far less of an issue for LFP batteries than it is for other lithium chemistries. So there's only one logical solution, right? My house needs a three phase upgrade. Yes, this average three bed semi is gonna get a three phase upgrade and that will be our next video. But getting back to my inverter requirements, I'm gonna be wanting at least a 10 kilowatt hour three phase inverter. This will allow me to make far more use of the stored energy within the battery. I'd quite like an inverter that has a low startup MPPT voltage, and this would allow me potentially to use the existing strings on the house with that inverter. These inverters tend to be able to handle quite big solar arrays, so that would future-proof us if we ever extended the roof on our house to have a much bigger array on the house. I'm also after an inverter that can communicate with Home Assistant. I use Home Assistant to be able to manage all the tech in my house. I also want to pick an inverter that's going to be on the list of approved to be used in the UK inverters, as this needs to be grid connected. It would be nice to choose an inverter that can be paralleled easily. This means that if we ever did decide to build a little battery house somewhere in the garden to stack multiple EV batteries, we could connect up all these inverters without issues. Most of these hybrid inverters have quite a decent backup power connection, which could be useful with the amount of energy that's being stored within the battery if there ever was an issue on the grid. But to be honest, the grid's pretty stable where we are, and it's very rare that we get power cuts, so I might not put this to use, but it's good that it's there. Where do I put the battery? How will I move it? Do I try and hide it, or do I make it a showpiece? Well, I can answer at least one of those questions, the first one. I think we're going to install it on the side of the house in a passageway. This passageway is protected from the weather. It has a canopy, albeit very old and needs replacing. How are we going to get this behemoth of a battery on a wall? I'm not sure yet. How am I going to mount it to the wall? Again, I'm not sure yet. I've got some ideas. As I leave you now, while I continue to collate my shopping list, remembering that this is for a YouTube video, so it's okay to spend all this money, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see what could be the best home battery storage system that you could have. This video series might take a little while to put together. The next one in this series, I'm going to start with that three phase issue. I wonder how much of that's going to cost me. I'll try to create a series of videos, a playlist and breaking down each step of this process in installing an EV battery in a domestic house. Until next time, Battery Man out.